Aye. Aye. By saying aye. Aye. Opposed? All right. Under mayor's business. Uh, just want to go over a couple things, make sure people know where we've been going, what we've been doing. Uh, Tony and I have uh, toured some local businesses and uh, really excited to see what's going on in Port Washington. Not only do we have uh, residential development, but we have a tremendous amount of commercial as well as industrial development. Uh, we toured Allen Edmonds last week and uh, saw the entire shoemaking process. We're excited to hear from their chief operations officer that Allen Edmonds is here to stay. Uh, their parent company is pleased with what they're doing. They did some phenomenal stuff during COVID. Uh, when they had to shut down, they um, shifted pretty quickly. Tony, 250,000 masks they sewed yep. uh, in a very short period of time with their employees, and they will be upping production. I think one of the neatest things we learned, uh, which reinforced the efforts of Alderman Benning's vision last summer, was uh, under diversity and, uh, and equity and inclusion that 60% uh, of the Allen Edmonds workforce is uh, Hispanic, Asian, and African-American uh, and come up from Milwaukee. So we'd like to actually bring to the DEI committee uh, to go up there and talk to their employees about, uh, about uh, Port Washington. Also visited Badger Technology Group, which is in the old Ozaki sports uh, complex. Uh, they design some amazing products there that they ship out to militaries and governments all over the world. They make uh, simulators uh, for helicopter training. So they had a 360-degree, uh, uh, I don't know, 20-screen deal over there. They just shipped one to Thailand for uh, helicopter training, and they also do jets, et cetera, and they're looking at some contracts. Uh, they will also be expanding their business, uh, bringing in a potential 50 new employees, so we have that to look forward to. Uh, Tony and I also visited Anze and Associates to see uh, all of the different things uh, that the Anze group is up to. Uh, very exciting to see the just different development, uh, the Anze family and the Anze company's commitment to Port Washington. Tony and I went two days later then, and we met the ambassador of Luxembourg, which was a pretty cool life experience. We also, I also toured Bernie's, fine meats, and um, I still smell like smoke from going to the smokehouse, and it was awesome. Uh, he, too, is expanding his production here in Port Washington, and I know that Bob and um, Tony are meeting with him in a couple of days or weeks to do that. Last thing I wanted to say is I also toured all the departments or most of the departments in the city. And uh, there's a few things there that I just wanted to highlight. One is I'm really, really proud to you know be a resident of Port Washington and also be in this position, but know that each of the departments are significantly invested uh, in our community and have great pride in their work. They're also incredible stewards of our resources. Um, when you walk through the plants, and I know tonight uh, Leo's here to talk about water and then we're also gonna be talking about sewer. When you go through those plants, and you see um, how well they have done to make sure that we have clean water and that our not so clean water leaves clean water with the resources that they have. It's something to be proud of. Police and fire, same thing. Uh, just great stewards uh, of our community. Uh, Tony and I also met with Ozaki County, Ozaki Washington Land Trust about the um, Clay Bluffs project. We're excited to see that moving forward. We've been working with state legislators to ensure that uh, the Knowles grant uh, maintains and continues. Um, Alderman Postel and uh, Tony and I met around the uh, mayor's ordinance. I was really proud of her work on that. She did a great job. So we'll be bringing that to you in a little bit. Review the RFP. And then uh, I'll be working with the Main Street Association running their strategic planning sessions here as we move forward. I tried to do that as fast as possible. Just not to get grief from the former mayor when he comes up for public comments. Uh, four minutes, that was four minutes. All right, and then the last thing here under mayor's business is we have a common council meeting. We have one common council meeting in July, and at that time I'll be bringing the two new library board recommendations uh, appointments. Okay, officer's reports, city engineer. Okay, just a, a couple of things. Uh, street improvement uh, project moving uh, right along. We have almost all of the uh, water main improvements completed on Butel and, and Benjamin, um, and they are beginning to do some of their um, uh, road repair on Thomas Drive, getting ready to um, mill and resurface that in, in the upcoming week. So they are a um, lot of activity going on on that project and uh, staying, staying, on, staying on schedule. Uh, Heart of the Harbor, we're still waiting on uh, We Energies to complete their electrical work, but once that's performed, um, we should see uh, the electrical contractor putting in lighting bollards and um, <clears throat> the ignition switch for the um, for the fireplace. And then once that's in, um, we can get going on the rest of our work, the concrete and, and paver work and the seating wall. 
So we hope to complete that in the next, it's probably about two months before we'll be completed with that project. And then uh, the sidewalk improvement project, uh, I don't have any updates on the citywide one. Um, we had our pre-construction meeting for um, the Hales Trails and Crestview project. And right now they're looking to begin that, I think um, the week of July 15th, if I have that correctly. To look at a calendar here, but anyhow, right, right in mid July. So um, I don't know if there's, oh, and, and the mayor, Tony and I, we did uh, have a, a Zoom meeting with Legacy regarding the, uh, the lighthouse and uh, they're gonna be getting some information back to us so we can sharpen up our, our estimates for that work and, um, and uh, possibly continue that relationship working with them towards getting uh, plans and specifications for the improvements. Yeah, thank you for bringing it up. That was, I was going to ask you that question. I also received uh, a note from the Coast Guard that I'll be getting that whole file. Uh, it was shipped to Milwaukee for them to redact, and then we'll be getting it, I don't know when, someday. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. Um, and then that, you you mentioned uh, We Energies. One question, and this came up at a couple of our visits. Robin, I don't know if you're the contact back to We Energies, but it came up in my conversations with uh, Mr. Dufferin as well about power consistency on the north side has really um, shifted in the last couple of years. Alan Edmonds brought it up as well. So I don't know mm. if there's a WE Energy contact you have that you could ask if there's a grid difference. But Alan Edmonds said three, four times this summer, all of a sudden, boom, they just shut down for no apparent reason. And they keep being told it's a tree on the bike trail. But yeah. That's so what they tell us too. Yeah. yeah. Which I, I believe them. I, well, sure. A there's of, a lot of bike. A lot of dead lot, elms out there. There's a, right. There's a lot, of, a lot of trees on the bike trail. Yeah. So... Okay. Um, Any other questions for Rob? Yeah. I do, Mr. Mayor. Yes, uh, go ahead. Where are we with Michaels as far as the breakwater? Yeah, I'm glad. Thank you for asking. Um, they are loading up their barges uh, starting Thursday. So in two days, they're going to be um, putting their, their barges in the water from Coldock Park. Great. Thank you. Yep. And they anticipate restarting work next week. Barry will go back up before they start then? Yes, I'm certain it will. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Nine yeah. Alderman Benning, did you? Same, same question. Okay. Uh, city planner. Bob. Not too much. Um, I'll be heard from later in the agenda, but uh, just coming up on Thursday is a relatively small plan commission agenda. Uh, three items. Two of them are discussion items, and one is a just a, a is a uh, setback uh, issue exception on Milwaukee Street. Other than that, a fairly. Uh, in, Fairly smaller plan commission agenda, which is the smallest it's been in a few months. Excellent, thank you. And uh, city clerk. Uh, just giving an update on the events in the city coming. Uh, Farmer's Market starts on June 19th and runs through October 23rd. That starts at Franklin Street and goes up Main Street to Wisconsin, which is just over here near City Hall. Um, Friday Night Flicks is run by Park and Rec. That's going to be happening on June 25th in Veterans Memorial Park, 3 to 10.30 p.m. Uh, the, to back up, I'm sorry, the Farmer's Market is held in the morning um, until about noon to 1 o'clock. Uh, UPAF, 2001 Ride for the Arts, will be happening in the city of Port Washington on June 27th. Um, it starts uh, at 7 a.m. There's different start times. I believe they are still taking registrations for that. Um, they will finish at uh, Coldock Park. And this is, I believe, the first year that UPAF Ride for the Arts has uh, made us uh, their actual uh, finishing um, area in a park rather than just a drive or a cycle through, I should say, um, the city. So we're excited to have them using us as one of their uh, bases for the weekend. Um, there is on July 3rd on Upper Lake Park uh, Beer Garden area, Port Washington Firefighters EMS Association will be holding their beer garden. So uh, that will be the first one in the beer garden series that runs through from July 3rd to October 9th each Saturday. So that's where we're at with that. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions for Susan? Okay. At this time then, we are welcome for public comments. Public comments can be spoken for up to three minutes. If you need more time, contact the city administrator to have an item put on the agenda. Any public comments? <laughs> yeah.
Yeah, we're all going to set our timer. I'm just kidding. Mr. Becker, Mayor Becker, welcome to the council meeting. Thank you. Um, I was at police and fire on Monday and it was brought up on the fire station again. And I really, my personal view is it's being put on the back burner. I understand the survey coming. This is no disrespect to you as a mayor, to the city administrator, the former city administrator or the former mayor, which is myself. But we got to put, it's got to be pushed. It's got to, you got to keep it on the front burner going forward. And I understand about the survey, I understand other communities, but other communities really, we are, you know, not mentioning other communities, don't really care about certain things and they just don't do their due diligence. So again, public safety, you know, at least we have to get the studies, we have to find the land. You're gonna need something somehow with all the new building and everything else. We finally have two EMTs, EMS working, and um, we just got to keep going. We can't forget about the um, fire station. And with that, I could yield my remaining minute to Mr. Wagner. Wait, I don't have to start over? No, you get an extra minute. Oh, okay. Thank you. Yeah, yeah I won't. I'll be brief. Uh, hi, my name is Carl Wagner. Uh, I represent the Port Washington Lions Club, and I just wanted to give you uh, a brief rundown of the summer festival that we're planning on having uh, July 16th and 17th. Uh, the 16th is from roughly 3 to 9 p.m. The 17th is from 11 a.m. to roughly 9 p.m. Um, it's my group, uh, BE3, the Rotary, the Yacht Club, and the St. John's and 23rd are all gonna have our own stands or areas set up down there uh, selling fish and chips, uh, brats, hot dogs, hamburgers, uh, beverages. And we are having it at the band shell. We've got a band Friday night. Uh, there's three bands on Saturday. We're just hoping to get a great turnout. And from the feedback we're getting from people, it sounds like a lot of people are planning on coming. So I just wanna let you guys know that I'm, I see a, on the agenda further down our License comes up for the festival. So if there's any questions, I'll be here to uh, be able to hopefully answer those for you. And we look forward to uh, having the event and moving forward. Thank you. Carl, who are the bands? Um, Friday night is Midlife Oasis. Um, and Saturday night is uh, Left on Sunset. Uh, Saturday during the afternoon, I think we just have like some uh, orchestra type people playing is just I'm not sure exactly who they are yet but we've got music lined up for all that so it'll be a fun family event and there'll be plenty of space down there for all of us so it should it should be good well thank you for your leadership and the the other nonprofits for doing this I, I think we're all looking forward to yes. some sort of fish day tradition there and also on my behalf I'd <clears throat> like to thank you for not bringing in Night Ranger <laughs> so well, well that's done. pretty old or head east or anything like that <laughs> yeah, right, right. <laughs> Right, but seriously, thank you. Okay, thank you. Any other comments? Council, if it's okay, there's a request to move two agenda items up. The first is unfinished business, uh, consideration of possible action on the design for the fish cleaning station, and the second is a report under 8A1 for the review of the plant conditions because those are two presentations for us. Is that okay? So we'll get the fish cleaning station up here first. So right now, Rob has a staff recommendation as he's setting up there for the fish cleaning station. Staff recommends approval of the new fish cleaning station design as presented. In addition, staff recommends approval of extending the construction and operational deadline in the third amendment to the redevelopment agreement from July 31st, 2021 to April 1st, 2022. In this scenario, construction on the new fish cleaning station would commence after September 15th of 2021 and be completed prior to the fishing season, April 1st, 2022. Rob? Okay, yeah, I'll just introduce uh, Elliot from uh, Rinka and uh, um, and Andy is here as well. Sorry, I caught off, I've totally caught off guard. I didn't know I was introducing them. So the, the Ian McCain, who needs no introduction, I'm sure to the council. So um, yeah, we, it's been a, a long process here. Um, 
uh, to get to this point, but um, I'm very, very happy with the progress and how it all came together. And, and uh, they're working with the right people. And, and we've uh, been working with the, the marina on this as well. And of course, wastewater and um, looking forward to a, a good finished product. So they'll go, go through it right now. Sure. Uh, Mr. Mayor, council members, thanks for having us. Uh, I'll just run through the presentation that uh, we provided to the city, I think, last week. So hopefully everybody's had a chance to, uh, to review it. <clears throat> so the new fish cleaning station uh, project location is uh, uh, basically being shifted a few hundred feet uh, south of its current location. Um, Going to be more centralized within the marina itself, um, kind of off to the side, so not, you know, in a major thoroughfare of traffic in that area and easily accessible. These are some conceptual renderings that our team put together, uh, different views of looking at the, the concept design, just to run through a, a few items related to that. Uh, it's proposed to be a, a wood structure um, stained with a, a really high quality marine grade, solid stain, so it'll, you know, hold up to, to weather and, uh, and that sort of thing. The wood columns that uh, support the wood structure will be set on concrete piers, so uh, to keep that wood away from the ground for snow and, and plowing and things like that. Uh, the sign that's shown in the rendering here, that's, that's not the final sign design that would go through a signage vendor and they would work with the city to design a sign that you know fits. If anybody's familiar with the existing sign, um, you know, it has all sorts of emblems and, and Port Washington related, you know, logos and things. And that's, you know, what we would expect. Um, but certainly that'll come back for, for approval. Uh, the fish cleaning table is and the <clears throat> structure above it is being relocated and, and refurbished uh, with all new equipment within that. Um, and it's uh, located uh, right next to where we have some plantings and landscaping that's currently existing on the marina uh, on, on the north and uh, west side of the structure. Can I add a couple pieces to this? Yeah. So the, the genesis of the, the blue and the size uh, were based on a meeting with um, the team from the, the marina and also with the team from the filtration plant and with Rob as well. Um, if you're curious on how we came up with the size, the logic was the furthest overhang from the edge of the table that exists today, uh, so the south side of the existing station, is what we created as a width of, of clear space all the way around the table in the new location. So in the current location, you actually have smaller pinch points on the three other sides, but on this, you're gonna get that same, same uh, space all the way around on all four sides. Uh, and then the, um, the blue on the roof uh, is direction from the marina team to match the roof on their existing facility. Thanks, Ian, I forgot mm -hmm. to mention that. <clears throat> and then these are some of the uh, closer to uh, construction documents that, that we provided. We were already kind of working on the uh, documents for, uh, for plan approval. Uh, so as Ian said, you know, the size um, uh, gives a little more space to, uh, you know, to, to the users, table centered under the structure. Uh, again, it's a, a wood structure on the left hand side, you can see a, a reflected ceiling plan. The intent is to use uh, a beadboard kind of tongue and groove uh, stained plank that's underneath the roof structure. So that'll all have a continuous kind of stained um, wood appearance. And again, that existing uh, uh, frame above the fish clean table that contains all the sprayers and electrical and all that um, will be refurbished and, and centered as well. Uh, just to the south is uh, gonna be in-ground uh, pumping station to pump the uh, you know, the fish cleaning uh, refuse back up to connect to the original location. And that's shown um, in the civil drawings that were included here. So, uh, you know, per coordination with the city engineers and, um, and others that seem to be uh, the location that we had to route uh, that sewer uh, lateral to. Uh, it's located um, to try to minimize, you know, um, repaving of any existing uh, parking areas. It uh, sounds like Lake Street is going to be uh, repaved in the future, and we look to, you know, coordinate the work in the street with that effort, uh, so that we're not patching, you know, twice. <clears throat> and these are just uh, more civil drawings that show kind of repaving utilities, <clears throat> and then looking at uh, grading uh, directly around the new fish cleaning station and its location. Uh, 
and civil details, which I'd love to go through for everyone. <laughs> um, and then we have some equipment, uh, preliminary equipment specs from Crane Engineering, uh, of what type of equipment will be uh, installed and um, the specs on that per uh, city engineering request. And, and Rob, if you'd help us confirm, this has been validated equipment wise, uh, comfort from you, the filtration plant, as well as Dennis, is that correct? We're yeah, the wastewater plant. Excuse yeah. me, wastewater. Yep. yep. Um, one of the keys that's come up here is uh, the timing. We can get in that next. So I'd like to talk on the look and the feel, the design, the layout. Um, I guess while well, we've got the comments fresh in our minds, but then we can get into the, the timing as well next, if, if that works for everybody. <clears throat> Any questions, Mike? Sure. Alderman uh, Gasper. Sure. Um, what uh, pavement surface are you planning on putting around the fish cleaning station itself? Is that going to be concrete or is that just going to be asphalt? Yeah. Yes, it's concrete. Yes, it's concrete. Okay. All right. Um, I presume uh, the city, since city engineer approved it, that the proposed uh, grinder in here is at, at least as powerful as the existing one? That. Yeah, the, the grinder itself is that we're using the same one. Okay, we're going to upgrade, I think, we're the gonna, motor. We're going to refurbish it yeah. uh, as part of our project, and that's the timing conversation that's coming up on how that works. Um, but it is the existing grinder relocated, refurbished with new teeth, new gaskets, et cetera, uh, and then the balance of the components to pump it north are all new. Okay. And uh, we have the same number of uh, stations in there for cleaning as the current one, or at least as many? Yeah, it's, it's yes. the exact same. It's exact They're same. moving over the table and hoses, okay. yeah. Yep. All right. That's what all I had. Thanks. Thank you, Alderman Gasper. Other questions? None? Okay. Very good. So timing, uh, the, other, the other discussion is, is timing, if I can jump into that quickly as well. You know, we, we've gone on a, a journey of learning more about fish cleaning stations than I think I ever planned on, on learning. Uh, but the reality of it is it's been a really fruitful process because where we started in February with you, Rob, versus to where we are now, I think we've got something that we're all very, very confident in. I'm speaking for you on that one, Rob, but uh, it's been a very fruitful process. One of the items that's come up, though, is the timing specifically around the grinder, although we ordered the wood a month and a half ago on the bet that we got to have a structure and timing and wood's challenging. Um, the reality is everything is a long lead, but the refurbished um, grinder brought up a really dis different discussion as it takes, because it's a four to six week process. So in reviewing that with the team and with Dennis, it's pretty clear that the recommendation is to do that after the season so that we don't have the fish cleaning station decommissioned for August and their, their primary months. Um, so that's, that's the genesis of the, the discussion tonight on, on the extension that we're requesting as well. <clears throat> To be clear, right, the existing fish cleaning station would stay operational yeah, until sorry, the end of the season, really right? I mean, that's for the record. Yeah, absolutely. In this proposal, the existing one stays open all the way through the 15th of September. Yeah, good. That would be my main concern, right? But if, if we're keeping the existing station open through the no, season, good question, absolutely, right? That's yeah. to be to be clear. We're yes. talking about over the winter months getting this constructed in time for next season. Yeah, well, I mean, I still want to do this right away this season versus having it lag, I mean, after the season. Um, but the reality is, yes, that allows us to do this timing it not just to miss the season, but then also to coordinate in a better way with, with Lake Street. It just uh, all kind of comes together really, really well. And yes, one more time for record, it will be open all the way through the end of season. Any other questions? Then we'd be looking for a motion to approve the new fish cleaning station design as presented and timeline. And I'll move that we approve the new fish station cleaning design and the uh, revised date so that it's completed by April 1, 2022. Is there a second? I will second, but also a discussion point. Do we need to do anything with the developer's agreement? Yeah, we'll see that at a later date. Oh, Mr. City Attorney. Well, uh, you will by way of a fourth amendment, but I don't know that it has to come back because you're approving it. it. Only the dates change from 731 this year to 41 next year. That's easy. Thank you for asking the clarification. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So just to be clear, if this is passed tonight, I would, I, Rob and uh, team would work with the developer to get the fourth amendment and then execute it and it would not come back to the council. Very good, thank you. Scott. Um, 
uh, as a member of the Harbor Commission, I kind of wish this had had a chance to go before them before we had approved it so they'd have a chance to look at it. Um, and I understand we want to keep on schedule, but still, I, um, I, I know the next Harbor Commission meeting, I will be fielding complaints about them not having seen it first. Okay. Any other questions? All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? All right. Thank you. Good luck with... Yeah, you're welcome. Okay, then we are moving on to uh, Mr. Dufferin and his team here. We're going to move on to agenda item A1, which is the review water treatment plant condition and needs assessment report from Short Elliott Hendrickson Incorporated and City LLC. <clears throat> this is information only, correct? With questions, yes. yes. We yep. appreciate so we appreciate being given the entire report with all the great pictures <laughs> of the plastic wrap, <coughs> everything else. Yeah, and I, I can quickly inter introduce uh, just an introduction before the, the the presentation. Just so this this work has been going on for about a year. It's it got stalled a little bit by uh, COVID and, and travel restrictions. But um, it uh, essentially began with uh, DNR orders that uh, we needed to um, address some some deficiencies at the plant. The most notable of which is the the um, height of the the clear well being below the, the existing lake level. Uh, that, in addition to the requirement that we have uh, standby power at the the plant. So, to your point about. Uh, losing power, of course, uh, we require power in order to uh, treat and, and pump water. Um, those two things primarily along with just the aging the aging plant, which is, um, uh, well, has been well run. It is, uh, several components are, are nearing the end of their useful life. And so um, this, this presentation culminates about a year's worth of work doing uh, this uh, study and we'll address these major deficiencies and um, and uh, obviously it comes with a, a large price tag which we will uh, talk about a little bit uh, as well in the presentation um, but that's just wh where it started and kind of where we've come from and how we got to this point so I'd, please ask any questions you have as we go on with the presentation but otherwise I, I think Tom and Miles will uh, be making their presentation. So take it away. Do you have the right. board? Yep. Up. Okay. You're, you're, you're Thank you, Rob. Yeah. So, Mayor, Council, uh, thanks. Uh, I'm Miles, Miles Jensen. And uh, Tom and I have worked at the treatment plant on various projects since dating back pre 96. So, uh, we have a little bit of experience with what's at the plant and all of that sort of stuff. So, Thank you. Um, so, so a little bit of a history of the plant. It, it, as you know, it's a conventional surface water treatment plant. Uh, total capacity is 4 MGD. It has uh, two nearly identical plants constructed uh, right side by side, 2 MGD each. And uh, the plant has had some minor upgrades, but uh, in 96, uh, we worked on uh, an upgrade to a portion of the plant. And then uh, in, uh, somewhere in there, uh, let's say 1970-ish, right around in there, was when the Thomas uh, uh, Port uh, booster station element was added to the facility. <clears throat> so as Rob said, uh, the, the, the DNR, is, it was sort of the catalyst that uh, got the project uh, brought it to uh, uh, the limelight to move the project forward. Um, they, they, they did an, uh, a, a sanitary survey and came back with uh, only a few deficiencies. Uh, um, uh, and they set a deadline to c take care of all the deficiencies at the end of this year. Um, the, the clear well overflow it doesn't terminate in a downturn bend, which is their uh, code. And uh, um, I'm gonna stop right there for a second. One of the things that we have encountered now 
is when the plant when the plants were designed, doom, 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 they met the current interpretation of the codes at that time. And this is pretty important stuff because somewhere, and I don't know if you know when it was, but it was, I want to say in, uh, in the, uh, um, the earlier 2000s, let's say, DNR code slipped in a, 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 an article or a line item or whatever that basically said that anything that's deficient that was compliant back when the plants were built, but it's deficient by their current code needs to be brought up to current code. That's, a, that's one or two sentences, but the ramification is massive as you'll see here. But I just wanted to stop and give you that little public service announcement. The, <clears throat> the, um, so then the next one is the auxiliary power doesn't meet current standard. DNR wants backup power to be provided on the site for all of the major infrastructure items of a municipal drinking water system. And uh, so for years, everyone thought that the, uh, the electric system was, was uh, uh, in good shape. There's three separate circuits, three separate feeders that come right to the plant. They're actually tied into the electric grid in the plant. And then there's also uh, a connection for a standby generator. Well, in, in the summer of uh, 2019, you had a nice storm. The trees were knocked down, took out all three power lines. Well, you got the backup generator, right? Well, no, you got to go get it. But then you got to clear all the debris out of the way to get the generator on site. So the plant was down for about five hours where you just simply couldn't make any water. And then when the plant is able to come back online, there's all the backwashing and the prep and all that stuff to bring the facility back uh, um, up to production. So that, uh, that kind of emphasized maybe what DNR was kind of wanting to get across to everyone is, hey, you really need to have some sort of on-site permanent generator. So that's that piece of it. And then the last one uh, is the Clearwell floor elevations that Rob uh, alluded to earlier, where the, the, uh, the floor level in the Clearwell, so the Clearwell is the, the, the finished water that uh, gets pumped out into the distribution system. And uh, the, the floor of that Clearwell by code nowadays has to be two feet above groundwater or in this case, the historic high water level of Lake Michigan. So uh, one, one of the two clear wells, I believe number one is a foot and a half, the floor is a foot and a half below lake level, and the other one is about four feet, or two and a half feet, I'm sorry, and four feet. So uh, um, kind of a, a, a big deal, since that's where your tr the drinking water is at, and it's also at the bottom of the facility, and the rest of the facility is built on top. So it complicates things. So that little sentence that the DNR decided to put in their code is a, a, a big mushroom cloud. So the report, the, the condition assessment report, uh, you know, we talked about the clear well, and that's scheduled uh, for uh, completion here yet this summer. And then the emergency power, um, uh, you were fortunate to get an EDA grant to, to help uh, with the funding of the, uh, uh, the generator piece of it. And then uh, the clear well improvements that I was just speaking of, uh, we're looking at uh, alternative number one in the assessment report, which, <clears throat> which basically uh, uh, keeps the existing clear wells, but DNR says, well, you, you, you won't get any disinfection credit for those uh, clear wells. You need to build entirely new ones. But that, that's the least complicated uh, uh, alternative uh, in terms of when the construction moves forward, you still have to keep the patient alive. So every day, every minute, you know, the, the plant has to run or be able to run. So the, 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 uh, uh, the way that the plant upgrades would be done really needs to be tailored or sequenced to make sure that that can happen. And 
alternative number one, I think, is does the job there. Uh, the, the report also goes on to talk about the electrical improvements. If you've been to the facility, you know that virtually, I'm just going to say, all of the electrical equipment, with a few exceptions, is old and outdated um, and really needs to be replaced. Is that a fair statement? Okay. Um, and then we're looking at uh, the addition of UV. Uh, uh, ultraviolet disinfection, similar to what you all are going to hear about at the waste treatment plant later, but this would be for a second barrier for disinfection of your treated water prior to putting it into the distribution system. So you're not just relying on chlorine anymore. You would be uh, have a, a backup type uh, uh, disinfection system. And then the, uh, the report also uh, recognizes the, the condition of the facility and there was a number of upgrades that logically would, you know, you'd want to do at the same time or certainly consider uh, uh, security improvements, upgrades to the bathrooms, the, the lab itself, um, the uh, uh, windows, the uh, control system, the controls, I think, were, were, they, were, they were done when we, in 96, right? And so that's... So 2008 or 9, and uh, I bet you some of those PLCs are all not supported anymore. So, and then uh, uh, some HVAC improvements uh, in, in terms of, primarily in terms of, of the, uh, uh, the heating system. And then uh, um, the roof replacement is on there, but we are not going to do that right now. I think the roof's in okay shape for a while. So <clears throat> Clearwell Project alternative, alternate number one would be to construct uh, uh, a new uh, Clearwell and EQ basin uh, on the south side of the existing plant. Um, we would not be filling in the uh, existing clear wells. Those will be uh, nice uh, uh, water storage for, that would actually help Leo's process a little bit or give him a uh, little bit more flexibility on how he has to turn the plant on and off. Uh, the addition of UV, as I said earlier, for uh, disinfection, uh, uh, improvements, uh, you'll get a two and a half log removal for crypto, Giardia, and half log for virus. The new high service pumping facility right now, again, if you've been to the treatment plant, you know that there's two separate pump rooms because there's two separate treatment plants, and then the uh, Thomas Port booster station, and all of that will be brought to, on the, on the high lift pumping side, will be brought to the, the newer uh, uh, Clearwell facility along with the, uh, the, the standby generator building. And then uh, the uh, water treatment plant number one would be uh, improvements to the pump room, uh, in particular the low lift pumps and water treatment plant number two uh, uh, backwash and intermediate pumping. One of the things that the treatment plants cannot do right now is pumps from one plant cannot serve as a redundant uh, facilities or equipment for the adjacent plant and we want to change that. And now would be a good time. So uh, this is a Drawing from the from the report that shows alternate number one gives you a little bit of a schematic, and it also shows the uh, the proposed uh, uh, constructed buildings on the south side of the uh, uh, the plant, and it also shows uh, uh, where the uh, uh, piping schematically would uh, leave the, the the plant there and connect into the two different uh, pressure districts. And I think this is, I mean, to go on or? 
Sure. Okay. So the goals of, of, of the, uh, the the treatment plant project obviously was to meet EPA and DNR code. Um, it's to extend the useful life of the plant another twenty five to thirty years. You know, this is something that that again is a little infomercial about how I think, but the community has spent a bunch of money on concrete and the building and all that stuff and. There is no reason to think that that can't last for another 50 or 100 years. So the, it's, it's the equipment inside that, you know, needs to be addressed primarily. And uh, um, that's, that's something I think is real important is to just continue to use something that you've already invested in and all that. Uh, the, the, another goal was the operational flexibility and simplicity. Uh, uh, this, uh, this project will help to further those uh, particular features. Uh, um, the, maintain service when the clearwells are out of service for inspection. So DNR requires that e clearwells be physically drained and physically entered and inspected every, every five years. And uh, um, this will allow that to happen. Right now, it's kind of a complicated process, and uh, the the new clear wells will allow be able to take them down independently and uh, and do the inspection work that they require. Uh, we're going to maintain seventy five percent of the existing storage by not filling in those those existing clear wells, but continuing to use them essentially as uh, um, wet wells, if you will, for the intermediate pumping. It gives Leo's crew uh, a nice buffer for when the plant, like I said earlier, when the plant needs to turn on and shut off and things like that. And, and if you've ever operated a facility like that, you certainly understand if you have a a nice supply of water that you can draw from rather than having to worry about supply and what's going out uh, the door uh, um, for treated water, uh, having them dialed in so carefully. I'm not sure I explained it that way, but it's what it feels like anyways. Um, and then minimize the impact uh, to the open space along the lakefront. Uh, right, you know, we're, we're looking at uh, the building being positioned on that south side in that green space. And so we've tried to minimize the size of that building to, you know, recognize let's keep as much of the green space as we can. And then incorporate the new generator into the, the, the building addition. So, and I think this is where you... Can we take out, okay? Yeah, you... I can do this. Okay, so... Um, so part of the is also a new facility addition, and that's where we're talking about the, the high service pumps that are going to be uh, stored in our new uh, facility. Uh, we're going to move the Thomas Port booster station that's on the north side of the treatment plant right now into this new facility as well. So all of our high service pumps are going to be in the same location. Uh, they're all going to be this uh, vertical turbine can design so we can pump water right out of the new uh, clear well, uh, no problem. Um, that new facility also is going to contain the UV disinfection system. It's going to house the generator, as Miles mentioned. And uh, that existing Thomas Port booster station, we're not going to demolish it. We're going to let Leo repurpose that to use it for other things uh, inside the plant. Uh, so talked about the goals. So again, just kind of going down the checklist here. But we want to make sure our design meets EPA and DNR code. And we met with them earlier this year and kind of uh, put it that alternative one in front of them, and they were uh, very uh, open to that design. They thought it met uh, their code compliance, would uh, take care of the deficiencies that they had uh, mm -hmm. um, put in the report. Um, and again, it extends the useful life of the facility, um, maintains that operational flexibility and simplicity, because now we're going to be able to supply water from our low lift pumps to either plant. Uh, mm -hmm. And so all of our pumps uh, that are going to be in the plant uh, are going to be now able to be uh, service water from either either side of the plant when it's in operation. Um, we want to maintain service when the clear wells are down for inspection. As Miles mentioned, that'll be uh, incorporated into the design as well as uh, minimizing our impact to that open space along the lakefront and uh, incorporating the new generator into the building. 
So the, our project cost estimate, and this comes right out of our, our uh, report here, is uh, construction subtotal is about $10.3 million. We add on about a 25% contingency right now because we're still in the very early stages here. That gets us to a probable construction cost of a little over, um, or just under $13 million. We add in some uh, legal administration fees because you always got to make sure the lawyers are paid, right? <laughs> just kidding. Um, engineering design as well. Uh, construction, uh, we estimated at 7%. And so that brings the total probable construction cost to about $15.3 million. I notice yeah. your lawyer dig there is only one third of the engineering yes. cases, so <laughs> just to defend our friend here. Well, I just wanted to see if he was awake, so I know. Yeah, oh, well, uh, everybody's awake with those numbers. Yes, I, I agree. It's not... Uh, I'd stay under the speed limit on my way out. Yes, I will. I will. So one of the things that we like to team up with, with SCH on is, is uh, SCH is very good at building projects like this. They like to build things like this, right? They're consulting engineers. It's the cost, really, that and the impact to our customers. That's where we as City Water kind of come in play, and we work really hand-in-hand -hand together because we manage and operate other utilities in the state of Wisconsin here in southeast Wisconsin. So we understand a big project like this, what the impact is going to mean to our customers. And we understand that customers are on fixed budgets. And we want to make sure that those rates, we keep that rate increase as low as we can. Um, so we've been able to develop a financial model uh, based on PSC accounting principles and, and really takes into account the rate of return method that they use in their annual report that every utility needs to file with the state. So what we do is we take your historical data from your previous 10 years of your um, annual reports and uh, help us project the future revenue and costs uh, for the utility. Uh, we you know, start to put in there, the, uh, like I said, the income and expenses going to that, the plant assets, so how much is currently invested in the plant, what we're talking about here in the future, uh, how much uh, has the utility retired over the years uh, as part of uh, upgrade projects and water main relay projects, and then what the debt repayment is uh, that the city currently has on the books. So we put that all into our model. We then uh, plug in these uh, future capital improvement projects that uh, the city has a five-year capital improvement project. Uh, most of the improvements for the water utility were water main relay projects. So we plug that all in there. And then this proposed water treatment plant improvement project, a $15.3 million project. Um, and then we start to look at funding sources, right? So. Um, you know, there's an EDA grant that you got for the generator, which will help bring down the, the rate impact. And then also the uh, Safe Drinking Water Loan Program uh, through the state of Wisconsin offers a low interest loans for uh, utilities to take advantage of. And your project certainly would vault you right to the top of that uh, loan program. And then with you, it's the Water Infrastructure Finance Innovation Act that EPA came out with a couple years ago. Again, provides a very low interest loan uh, to utilities, and so Port Washington qualifies. And the, the WIFI alone is really for major projects like this. So for a community that's less than 25,000 uh, people, um, you have to have a minimum project size of $5 million, and clearly we meet that goal. So again, we like our um, situation there to, to finance, uh, to get some low-interest loans through the WIFIA program for this project to help reduce those uh, long-term debt payments uh, that we're going to encounter with this project. Um, and so then we plug that all into our model, uh, and then um, what spits out is, is kind of a, a preliminary estimate as to what the utility would need to raise the rates to meet the 5% benchmark rate of return that PSE is pushing for every utility. Um, and so based on that, to meet that 5% benchmark rate of return in 2024, right now we're saying it would result in about a 45% rate increase, which is huge. That is no small change that we're talking about here. That's a major impact to your customers. And so, as we mentioned in the uh, Board of Public Works meeting, that is very preliminary, right? So what can we do to help reduce that rate? Um, first, um, the utility currently does not meet the 5% benchmark rate of return with PSC. I think the 2020 annual report was about a little over 3.5%, 3.6%. So you qualify to go for a simplified rate increase, and that's a pretty easy application with PSC that would uh, increase your revenues by about 3%. And if you file for that here in 2021, that can become effective in 2022, and so that'll help bring down that initial impact. Not a lot, it's only a 3% increase, but we would rather have a step increase to our customers than one big shot in the arm there. 
Um, and also we can reduce the utility's target rate of return. As I mentioned, that 5% is a benchmark rate of return that PSC wants every utility to uh, shoot for. Um, we've been successful in, in showing them that, hey, our model kind of projects that if we can go with a lower target rate of return that first couple of years and then build up through these simplified rate increases, we can get to that 5% benchmark rate of return. And really, they want you there because they re recognize that there's a lot of infrastructure that are, are in utilities that needs to be replaced. And so they want to make sure that you're not borrowing all the money to do improvement works, that you're doing some with cash as well. And so that's really where that 5% benchmark rate of return comes in from. So with a project like this, I think we, we're in a pretty good spot to work with PSC to say, we really want to minimize that impact to our customers, and so can we go with a lower target rate of return? And the other item that I've got up on there is uh, kind of pie in the sky thinking as a water utility manager, and I put my hat on, is capping the utility's pilot payment to the city. So uh, the payment in lieu of taxes, uh, with a project uh, the size of this, the you know $15.3 million, that would result in a little over $200,000 of annual increase to the utilities payment payment to the city. So I always mention that when we give uh, presentations like that, it's just something to consider, um, but I understand uh, that uh, the pilot payment is also a very useful tool to help people who are not, um, you know, that are tax exempt customers to also pay their fair share when it comes to some of these improvement projects as well. So again, uh, our rate model is very preliminary. Um, it's uh, based on this kind of a 15,000 foot view from above as we go through that assessment report. But we wanted to make sure that staff understands and that you understand what the impact is gonna be to your customers because that's gonna be one of the first questions that you're gonna to have to field, right? Um, and so, you know, we wanted to let you know that we're working with, uh, we've been working with Tony on our model as well and uh, his staff uh, here at the uh, city to kind of make sure that we've got everything in the right places, we've got all the money in the right buckets in our model, and, and again, we'll just continue to keep refining that as we move forward with the design process. Um, so our next, uh, next slide we've got here is just kind of what similar uh, projects in other communities. So Port Washington is not the only community that's been um, impacted by this uh, line item that Miles had talked about with the DNR, that you don't meet code, you need to bring your facilities up to code. So I put together a couple of examples of uh, communities in Wisconsin that are facing similar uh, deficiencies or um, you know, orders by the DNR to get their facilities up to code. South Milwaukee is the first one. In 2017, they filed for a, a construction authorization with PSC for a little, about an $8 million project. They used the state um, drinking water loan program to finance that at about 1.87%. Had about a 34% rate impact to their customers. And they were doing, they faced the exact same thing we are. Their clear wells were below grade. Hey, so, so. Those, uh, that 1.87% rate, um, would that be similar to what we would expect from WIFIA and the uh, state drinking water loan? As of right now, yes, okay. yep. So they're currently, both of those loans are under 2% right now. I wanted to give you a break to, to breathe a second. Yeah, okay. So uh, the next project I've got on there is, is Oak Creek. Again, in 2017, they went before PSC with a construction authorization. Their cost was about $27.7 million. They were going to do it again with uh, money from the state uh, loan program and then also revenue bonds. Uh, they were estimating a rate increase of 28%. And this is kind of what I get to... Um, you know, all of this isn't up to us to determine. The PSC has to grant us this construction authorization based on all the numbers that we're coming to them with and the finances. And so uh, PSC actually denied Oak Creek's proposal. They said, no, we don't like it. Uh, we think it's uh, too high of a cost right now. We think there's some engineering things that you can do to lower it. Uh, the biggest reason was they sell water wholesale to uh, uh, Franklin and Franklin fought them on that cost uh, quite a bit. And so, um, PSC sided with Franklin and said, nope, we're going to deny this. You need to come back and uh, re-engineer it um, uh, and come back with a different project. So right now, um, that's tied up in the, tor in the courts, I should say. Uh, Oak Creek has uh, filed a, a case against uh, PSC on, on that. Uh, but anyways, um, Oshkosh in 2017, again, they filed for construction authorization. A little over $20 million. They did not mention in their application um, how they're going to fund the project. And uh, they withdrew their application in 2020. So clearly, I don't think that they had 
everything in a row uh, to determine what their rate impacts were going to be to their customers and did they really have to do a lot of this. But they're still under order by DNR to get their um, plant uh, in, you know, under code. So um, they're going to be coming back in front of PSC here in a little bit. Sheboygan was the latest. They just filed this year for a $38 million improvement project. Uh, again, they're using the state drinking water loan program at 1.87%. Uh, they did not specify at this time because they just filed what their rate impact is going to be to their customers. Um, but again, you know, they were faced with uh, improvements that the DNR mandated to them. Uh, and this was not for Clearwells, but for their low lift pumping station uh, that's down by the plant. Uh, their pumps and motors were below the surf, uh, lake water surface uh, elevation. And so they had to raise that all up. The facilities are very old as well with Sheboygan. And so they were going to replace their pumping station and um, also put in some new intake lines. So that's really what drove that project up quite a bit higher. And so the last item I've got there is Port Washington. Again, we'd be looking at sometime in 2022 filing for a construction authorization with PSC. And right now that $15.3 million project, somewhere in that you know rate increase of 30 to 45%, again, preliminary right now, um, our status is we're just finishing up, you know, the needs assessment report, bringing that to you here tonight. And, uh, and again, our project is that above grade, clear well, our UV disinfection and water treatment plant improvements. So um, we're not alone in this battle. Uh, others are uh, faced with the same thing and, and some have tried to uh, fight DNR on this. I know Rob, you, you and Leo had talked with DNR about it and um, they're just not successful. DNR is, um, you know, uh, have mandated it. It's in the code. People have to do it. So there's no really, there's no way of getting around it. So before you before you move on to that, I have a, I yep. just have a, a, a question. The, is the code overseen by legislation or the legislature, or is are they independent? So they approve it. The legislature approves code. Okay. So. The DNR will go to the legislature with recommendations sure, for code, code changes, and then the legislature approves it. And when was that put into place? That's a good question. It was, it was, I, I wasn't, I'm not certain. Somewhere in the early 2000s, but I'm not certain of that. And then would you mind backing up one more slide for me, sure. please? So the estimated water rate increases in South Milwaukee, do you know what they were before... It was finalized there, so it says their rate increase was 33.9 and it's completed. Do you know what they're estimated at? I'm just um, wondering if I you guys are like actuaries where, you know, that's a really bad worst case scenario. And Right. So um, I don't know what they went into okay. uh, with. Um, I just looked at what the final rate order was. So um, I don't know. It's Thank you. Question. Any other questions about anything that's been presented thus far for him? We got some finance questions, but we can talk. I guess Tommy, if you wanted one. Oh, that's good. You can ask him now. Well, I guess talking about the rate increase as we a stepwise approach versus an all an, an all in in 2024. You know, what does that look like? 2022, three, four, five, six. Like, what does that rate increase look like if we step into it versus all in one shot, as you put it? So um, that's a good question. Uh, what we'd be looking at doing is um, securing funds here in 2023, and then. Um, booking everything in 2024. And so that's when we're going to take a really big hit with the rates is in 2024. Um, and so the, the process for a rate increase is not a quick process unless it's a simplified one. It's at least a six to seven months. Uh, we applied for one in our Brown Deer utility uh, in 2019, November of 2019 we filed and we got it implemented in November of 2020 partly because of COVID, but the other part is that it just takes a long time. And so it's very difficult to do a step approach other than the simplified rate case, which is a slam dunk right now because you qualify for it. And this 2024 is the last, or sorry, 2022 is the last year that you can do that. Um, and so um, when you get into 2023 and having to do a, a longer or, or larger rate increase, it's going to be hard for PSC to approve that when we've got this construction authorization in front of them, because it's going to take a good nine to 12 months for that to happen. Right. They have to authorize that and see what you're doing or see what we're doing and then base it on that, right? Correct. Yeah, I'm yep. sure. Um, I guess the next question I have would be about the grant that, we're, that we've been awarded, right? That, that $813,000 is, is uh, confirmed. Um, 
Yeah, sorry, yes. Right, yes, yes, yes. 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 Okay, and actually being shared with wastewater. Yes, right, yeah. yeah. Um, is, I should ask, is there opportunities for more grant money out there with the longevity, long, long term nature of this project? Yeah, it, with some of the loans, uh, the state loan program, uh, part of it can be a, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, you know, well, they, 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 uh, forgivable, forgivable loan. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. I forgot forgivable. Yes, right. Part of it will be forgivable. It can be, depending upon if we qualify for it. Same with WIFIA. WIFIA also allows you to delay payment, the start of payments on your loan for up to, I think it's three to five years after you receive the loan. So it's a little bit way to help or, you know, ease that, uh, you know, debt repayment, uh, kind of helping with a stepwise approach to the rate impacts. And just some follow-up on the cost. Um, other grant opportunities, you said, I mean, do we believe or, I mean, and I know it's not even close to finalized, but the, the infrastructure bill that's out there, do we le believe that there will be anything that we could tap into from that? I mean, has anybody looked at what's been discussed as relative to that? Yeah, so, it, you know, they, they have that existing loan that's out there or, or you know, uh, funding that's there now. Uh, that Port Washington is earmarked for. I'm, I'm talking the federal infrastructure bills. Right. So they're still in the works right now. I think that there'll be more coming. Okay. Um, obviously, would would qualify for a lot of that. Yeah, but I don't know what uh, currently is uh, is coming so, down. We're looking at in 2022, right. anyways. So you're 45 percent. While it all makes us, you know, sweat a lot. Right is a long ways from being 45% at this point. At this point, correct. Yep, that's kind of a worst case scenario, okay. right? And that's kind of when we were working with, with uh, Tony and, and the staff here, we kind of thought, let's start there and then kind of whittle our way down. And because, okay. you know, obviously nobody wants to have a 45% no, rate it's, increase. It's really. Residents have latched on to 45% and 15.3, and those are preliminary Right. Ballpark estimates at this point. So. Correct. They're very preliminary ballpark estimates. And again, as we continue to move forward with this project, we'll you know, keep those, the, right? yep, everybody updated um, with that. And then a question for Rob and Leo. I mean, know we did this with Dan and Wastewater. How are our rates compare to other similar communities in Ozaki County or the Milwaukee area, you know, today versus five years from now when the impact of this is hitting the rates? We know where we stand with that. I, I can just tell you where we are today. We're we're um, above average on water, but we're well below average on sewage, and so it I was hoping kind of balances be below on that water. Too. Yeah, it kind of it kind of balances out. But uh, you, know, but I mean, the, the biggest thing that for port that makes our rates higher are we, we have a surf, surface water plant as opposed to groundwater, and so. I think one of the ones utilities we've been behind is Sheboygan, but as you can see, they're you know greatly increasing their rates. Um, so I think you know I think it's a matter in Grafton. I think recently went through a big rate increase, and it's hard to compare, like Rob said. Right, a right. Surface I know it's not apples to apples, but apples to yeah, apples. right. Okay. okay, but and then back to your question about the infrastructure act, we'll clearly be looking at that closely yeah. should it come to fruition. Okay. Any other questions at this point? Alderman Tierney? Just quickly, and I, you know, maybe this is too technical to go into right now, but when we say it's not apples to apples, what does that mean to the average person? I mean, I understand that, you know, that we have a, you know, we're not pumping up groundwater. So what is, why is this more expensive to do? Sure, I, I can give you a couple answers to that. So, um, you know, on a groundwater utility, uh, you have a number of groundwater sources, number of wells in there. So if one goes down, you have others that can help make up for that. So you've got a lot of redundancy built in. But you also have to remember, if you're on a groundwater system, the homeowners then have a water softener uh, that they have to use as well. You've got a lot more flushing that you need to do in those systems. Um, so... Um, now you compare that to a groundwater, I mean, to a surface water system where we're making everything right down there by the lake, pumping it out. There are no point of use uh, treatment systems that anybody in their home has to have. Um, and so, uh, but as you saw in what kind of what we were talking about, each plant, why it's redundant to the whole, you know, the, the 4 million gallons 
Uh, each plant can put out two million. The pumps inside there aren't. And so when one pump goes down in plant number one, if it's a backwash pump, plant number one is down. And so there's just a lot more infrastructure that goes into a surface water plant and the redundancy with that, that uh, is tough to compare. I'd just say like a lot of you I know have come and toured the plant, go to a groundwater, you've got a well house with a well pump in it, pumping it up to a tower, that's it. You know, you walk in, you see all the pumps, you see all the treatment processes that we go through operator on duty, taking care of all that, a lot different. You know, right. That's where I get the apples to apples. It's, just not, it's not the same going surface water to groundwater. So, so yeah, I mean, the, the cost of producing clean water is it's, it's higher for a surface water plant, especially one where you know, we have a limited, po a smaller population than say the city of Milwaukee. But, um, you know, I would say in general, uh, lake water is it's, it's much higher quality and much more reliable. We don't have, especially in summer summer months, we don't have um, orders for, for watering lawns. Um, and then, you know, groundwater, um, groundwater systems too can have their problems. So if you ask Waukesha if groundwater is always reliable, um, you know, that can, that can lead to a huge rate increase as well, so. Alderman Benning. Yeah, one other question. Um, Leo, this doesn't change our ability, our, our quantity of, of water that we can produce. I, I don't remember the numbers there, but 4 million we'll gallons or something we'll like that. We'll have a little bit less capacity in the plant. We'll still be able to pump as much. Okay. So, little less capacity, storage capacity. Storage capacity. Storage yeah. capacity. So the rate that we can treat the water is, doesn't change. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we need to find some communities that are willing to put a pipe into Port Washington and <laughs> Sell some water to them. Careful. <laughs> right. Um, I had one other question. Leo, in all the years of the plant's existence, how many times have these DNR regulations been, if they would have been in place 50 years ago, would we have violated with flooding down into the well or any of those pieces? We've never had an issue with flooding down or anything that they think is going wrong. But the sanitary survey is every three years. I have one coming up next month. The 18 is the one where they said no more, no more grandfathering. I can go back to the 15 and 12, and that same clear wall issue is sitting in those sanitary surveys. But it was said, no problem. You guys have never had an issue. We go on. Now, what happened and what I've been told from the DNR and directly more than once what happened in Flint will not happen on my watch here. Well, I'm not looking to change surf source water here. That isn't what we're doing. But that's the attitude of the DNR right now. They're not going to let anything get by. This is code, and they're going to enforce it, and then we jump through the hoop to make them happy. Otherwise, we're in noncompliance. Yeah, and again, if I could get the date that that code, that zoning, that code was put in there by the DNR, the year at least, that would be fantastic. I'm going to make some calls to legislators this week. Okay. Yeah, I don't know how any of us could stomach a 45% increase in uh, water. That's not, that's not sensical. So I know it's safety, et cetera, but like you, you guys run a good ship down there and there's not an issue. And this is, uh, this is overreach and intrusive for our community. Okay. Mrs. Nitsky pays the water bill and I'm not getting yelled at. Did you guys have to get in for alternate? Yeah. Oh, sorry. Thank you for recognizing me. I apologize. Um, did you happen to go through a cost exercise in alternate two and what that would look like? Is it, did yeah, you ascribe a number to that, um, Miles? So it, it was more expensive than alternate number one. And mm -hmm. alternate number, number two, if you read the report, we were filling in the bottom five feet of the clear wells. And so it was a lot of expense for something that really doesn't need to be done. Mm -hmm. So, um, uh, we, you know, based on that, based on our discussion with DNR also, that's why we recommended alternate number one. Sure. Thanks. Yeah, just reading through it, I, I saw that and I didn't know how necessary you felt that was. So, um, yeah, it was, it, um, you know, 170,000 cubic yards of portable film. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. It's a, it's a lot. It's a, sure. Absolutely. I think we're talking about one of those, another one of those generational projects that we've been talking about more and more, right? A fire station, a library, a high school, a water treatment plant, 
wastewater, wastewater treatment plant. These are all ongoing necessities right. that we've extended our useful life past the point of its usefulness. So I think we should all appreciate that. You have other slides? Yeah, I just uh, the last. Does this get two. more in? Does this get more optimistic as you go on here, or should we go for a recess and? <laughs> no, I just have two more. So okay. uh, schedule. Ooh, a Gantt chart. Uh, yeah. So our, our uh, timeline that we've got shown here is you know finishing the needs assessment report now in second quarter, um, presenting here at the Board of Public Works and at the council as well, and then. Um, the overflow project, as Miles mentioned, that that small piece of deficiency that will get taken care of this summer. Um, and then we, we show the generator project on a little different path than the improvement project. Uh, one, uh, because there is a, a deadline on the EDA grant that we've got to have that uh, project finished by. Um, and so we are able, we did confirm with uh, EDA that we are able to um, ask for a little bit of an extension because we want to make sure that this generator project is done right, that we don't have to do it now. And then when the water treatment plant projects happen a year later, that we've got to move it and pay again to have something happen. So we did get confirmation that EDA would give us a, a couple of year extension on that uh, so that we can then bid that work out with the water treatment plant improvement project and uh, just have it uh, kind of run at a little different time for that we make sure that that gets done uh, before the end of second quarter in 2024. Um, but as far as the water treatment plant project goes, um, you know, we'll be looking at uh, securing funds here in uh, third and fourth quarter of 2021, what, you know, filing for the state loan program, uh, filing for WIFIA uh, as well to get on their radar list. And then um, we've got a design proposal. I think that's also coming before the uh, council tonight um, to start preliminary engineering report uh, that would start third and fourth quarter of 2021, uh, spill over a little bit into 22 and then get into a final design and then regulatory approval, which is pretty much gonna be all of 2022 uh, before then we can uh, bid out the project sometime fourth quarter 2022 and hopefully start construction uh, that second quarter of 2023. So. Our next steps, um, we've got to develop a compliance plan that we need to get back to DNR. So that's going to be one of the things that they'll probably talk about in your sanitary survey uh, next week. Um, so we want to request a three-year extension on the current deadline that's on our deficiencies for the generator and the clear well. Um, we complete the plan assessment, um, and we have council approval for design and financing plan in 2021 here. Uh, we do our design, as, as I mentioned, in 21, 22, and then regulatory approval in 22 and construction in 2023 and 24. So that's all that I had for our, uh, our presentation um, with the report. Um, I don't know if uh, at, is there any more questions. Yeah, any other questions from council? Um, yeah, I do have a question. Um, first of all, Leo, thank you to you and your staff for making sure that our water is as clean and tasting good as it has been. I really appreciate that. I do have a question, though, on with this multi-million dollar upgrade, you had mentioned specifically the roof wouldn't be done at this time. Yeah. Um, between the 20 to 25 years that this investment is going to produce, um, for uh, to extend the life of the operation, what else could go wrong during this time frame before loans are even satisfied that we need to worry about that might be piled on to these costs now? Um, you know, I, the roof is definitely one of them. I, when we had done the report, um, I think uh, the roof was, we, we found out uh, later that the roof was um, only what about five years, five, six years, five, six years old. So that that'll be able to last a little bit longer eight. or it's eight years old. Okay. So, um, so probably halfway through that, you will probably have to replace some of the roofing that's there. Um, other things that could go wrong in there. Um, you know, there's always a chance for other, um, you know, equipment inside. We're not replacing all the equipment inside, but, um, from a multi-million dollar standpoint, once we do this project, I don't see another, um, infrastructure project uh, 
um, having to take place. Because as Miles mentioned, you know, the, the concrete work that was done originally on all the plants is in excellent condition. The basins are in really good condition. They're all up to code. I don't see, unless code changes again, which uh, nobody knows that, but um, I don't see uh, another major project um, coming down the pipeline. Is that fair to say? Yeah, I don't expect you to have a crystal ball, but I thought right. I'd ask. No, that's a good question, though. I did, uh, I'd like. Oh, I'm sorry, Rob. Go ahead. No, I, well, I was just going to add. I mean, one of the, one of the code changes that I think might be foreseen is requirement of UV disinfection, and so that's why that's being included in this proposal. So one of the questions I have, uh, or requests, or expectations, I guess, is as we move forward with the proposal, is to have an accompanied 25 year plan for that site. So once it is remodeled, that we see much like that project map or Gantt chart you had shown before, 25 years out of useful life of the equipment, roof replacement, no future council should ever have to face that large of, a, of an increase again. And I think it would be great diligence for the community and, and stewardship on behalf of the departments. Because to Alderman Pleitner's point, we're going to hear in the next six months, every department head is in, the, in, a, is in a very similar position. So for us to be able to forecast fiscal stewardship for the city moving down the road, I think would be important. You know, Leo does a great job. They go on the tour. This is this. And when he points things out that are older than me or him, you know, right. we have a useful life to this point. But if you were to map the next 50 years for us, it, it would be a little different. So I would appreciate or expect that that would also become part of this for us, including yeah. the roof, because if it's eight year old roof, that's a rock covered rubber roof. Correct. So, right. That thing's got another 12 years before Leo wakes up and it's raining in his office. Yeah, so and part of our financial model that we do, it's a 10-year forecast forward. So we look at things like that, what, you know, if there's any major improvement projects that need to get done, we put that in the model so you can see how that affects the rates so that you don't need to, you can, you know, at least have an idea of when that next, next big rate increase might be coming. And hopefully you can prevent that by doing these step increases along the way. Yeah, I guess my request would, uh, and I love that, thank you, right. but it, for it to roll, 10 yep. years goes by like this, right? and then all of a sudden we wake up and, you know, there's a new guy here, a new person there, and, and we've missed that. So to have that rolling, I think, yep. for uh, our city administrator to be able to have that map up on the wall showing everything, if, you know, we build a new firehouse and this and that, there's a whole lot of things that come due at the exact same time, and that's a huge burden on the community. Yep. Alderman Benning, I'll be quiet. It's all yours. <laughs> um, Leo, the towers, the remote pump stations, they're in good shape. Is any you know, kind of following on, is there anything we need to do with those in the, this next time frame? I was tasked with asking Suez, who does our tower inspections, what's the useful life of a water tower? If it's properly maintained, they're going in and working on some that are well over 100 years old. Okay. So our towers are good. And our pump stations are fine right now. Okay. Yes. So there will be some SCADA upgrades done yeah, to those and but, stuff like that. But that's that. maintenance -y type yes. of upgrade thing. It's not like we're going to have to add a new pump because some subdivision's going in somewhere that you know, would, would drive a need for that. Okay. Other questions or clarifications? Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Good job. Thank you. And thank you, Rob, for leading all that out and for the phone book. <laughs> okay, let's have some fun. Let's move on to item number seven, seven A, Finance and Licensing Committee. Give away some liquor licenses here and get moving with some other pieces. So A1 is consideration and possible action on renewal of alcohol licenses for July 1st through June 30th, 2022. Yep, so you'll notice that this is a shorter list. These are the uh, sort of uh, stragglers. Um, that we're applying for their uh, renewal over their alcohol licenses. Um, that's the only consideration here, but the Finance and License Committee did recommend approval. There's a recommend recommendation for approval? I'll make a motion to approve, I guess. We'll go further yeah, and say that. Stay on that rule. I'll second. There's a second. Any questions or concerns about the motion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Item A2, consideration possible action on original Class A beer, Class A liquor license, Dolgen Corp and Dollar General, Class B beer and Class C wine, alcohol licenses, Hilla Beans, 
Javadoc and Cauldron 86 LLC, also known as Dockside Deli for July 1st, 2021 through June 30th, 2022. Yep, these were also recommended approval by the Finance Committee and uh, I would move to approve. Looking for a second. Second. Second by Alderman Benning. Any questions or concerns? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Passes. Number three, consideration possible action on annual cabaret licenses for July 1st through June 30th of 2022. I guess the only difference here would be from years past would be the addition of Singing Sam and Saloon. And this, did they have, did Steerage have one last year too, Susan? Or no, this would be new for them as well, right? Um, otherwise, all in, as in years past. So I would recommend approval. Second. Did you move approval as well and recommend? I did. I, okay. apo I apologize. Yes, I moved no, it's approval. Okay. <laughs> All right, moved and approved. Any questions or concerns about the motion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? All right, consideration of possible action on temporary Class B retailers license for Port Washington Lions Day Summer Festival event, July 16th and 17th. Yep, so this was also uh, recommended for approval downstairs at Finance and License, um, and I would uh, move approval. Is there a second? Second. Are there any questions or concerns about the motion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Fish Eve is now approved. Okay, going on to item B under standing council committees. Alderman Benning, update from diversity and inclusion committee and consideration and possible action on minor revision to the community unity statement. Yeah, so I'll, I'll start out with update from the uh, uh, diversity and inclusion committee. Um, over the past three months since we last gave an update, uh, the team has met with the school district um, to share some of what they're doing in diversity and inclusion um, and what they're, they're planning on doing moving forwards. So we had some very good discussions there. Um, we've worked on uh, potential opportunities for marketing the unity statement. Uh, we've looked at some websites uh, for other local communities and that we are providing input to the city administrator for the redesign of our city website to include uh, area information on diversity and inclusion. A um, couple of our team members have been working on some community resources. Um, this is an information page that will be on the website for those that are newer to our community of, of where they can get various resources um, in there. And probably the biggest thing in, in this group has been involved with is our seminars that we've we've done in uh, um, May and, and well April and May, late April and May. The first one being uh, on unconscious bias, and the second one on the hidden history of diversity in America. Um, I think these were extremely well received. Uh, Reggie da Jackson did a tremendous job of sharing um, a whole lot of information. Uh, a whole lot of great discussion occurred during and, and after those sessions. Um, all of our city uh, leaders were involved in the, in the uh, live presentations. Uh, and live, I mean, they were on Zoom uh, here in the chambers. Uh, all alders were invited, as well as the Diversity and Inclusion Committee. Um, and then uh, following the, the original presentation, the recording was available for uh, all city employees. And to my knowledge, all city employees have uh, participated in, in uh, viewing uh, these uh, sessions, all, at least all full-time employees, um, for the unconscious bias and then the hidden history of Diversity in America. They're in the process with that one. So that's the update from a Diversity and Inclusion Committee at this point. Are you having any more sessions? Before? Not at this point. Yeah, no, no additional sessions are planned at this point. Um, separately, the library is working on some uh, additional uh, educational opportunities, more public focused, based on a grant that they recently were able to receive. So look, look for more from the library on that one. Um, and then as we were working on the, the marketing plan for the uh, community unity statement, um, Based on some feedback that the members of the committee had gotten uh, and, and our discussions, um, they have brought forward this request to remove uh, the word citizens from the statement. So it would be for all um, instead of all citizens and felt that this would be much more inclusive. Um, 
citizens means those who live in the in the community was was the thought, and all means anybody who's visiting, working in, um, or otherwise in our community at any time. So, um, from the diversity and inclusion committee, there is a proposal to remove the word uh, citizens from the uh, unity statement. And I would uh, move that we approve that change. I will second that motion. Any questions or concerns about the motion? So just, uh, Alderman Bang, it's gonna read, the city supports open doors to respectful and productive conversations for all or with all? Um, just take citizens off. With all. So with all. Yeah. Okay. So the city supports open doors to respectful and productive conversations with all. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Excellent. Thank you. And thank you, Alderman Benning. All right, moving on to from city boards commissions. We've done the number one, so we'll move to number two, consideration and possible action on professional services agreement with Short Elliott Hendrickson Incorporated for engineering service on the proposed water treatment plant. Staff recommends approval uh, based upon the discussion at Board of Public Works. Okay, yeah, so I'll bring our team up here again. As uh, <clears throat> we've gone over, we're working against, we're working against two deadlines, really. Um, the, the, the DNR deadline for um, compliance, which uh, unfortunately um, is the end of this year. So we're not gonna meet that deadline, but they want to uh, be assured that we are working, before they give us an extension, to, to be assured that we're working towards uh, compliance. Um, the other deadline, of course, is the, um, <clears throat> is the grant from, from EDA, which, uh, Again, we are very grateful to Bob for getting uh, bringing in eight hundred and thirteen thousand dollars. That is that is a major grant. So I, I uh, utilities are forever indebted. Um, so, but that has a uh, that also has a very strict uh, deadline. Our initial um, uh, um, grant application uh, indicated we could uh, perform this work in thirty three weeks. 33 months, sorry, which we could have. Uh, however, combined with uh, the proposal that, that uh, we just discussed, of course, that the generator is not going to, uh, is going to be, would be housed in the new, new building, which of course extends the deadline as opposed to either installing the generator in the existing building uh, as a standalone project or in its own um, weatherproof container outside of the building, um, which is what we're doing at, at wastewater. Um, so those are the two deadlines we're working against and we, so we would like to move uh, forward quickly. So I'm, I, I know the, the mayor, you made some indication that perhaps we could, um, there's some discussion yet to be had and so uh, we can um, discuss that. Uh, I, I do maybe want to preemptively address you know some of your concerns because we have believe me well we've talked about you know what our options are is fighting the requirements of the dnr and perhaps um our team can give some insight on other utilities that have that have taken this route and where it's where it's gone so i don't mean to put you on the spot but we have we have discussed this um i like your approach uh, no, I mean, I, yeah, I, Rob, I totally agree. I mean, I, this is usually a, a very, well, this is a, a battle up a cliff, not a hill. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I, I will have two meetings uh, in the next two days with our legislators to just talk about what they can potentially do for us. And if they can't help on one end that as they head into joint finance motions tomorrow, uh, our state senators on JFC and uh, we, we should we ask for some financial support for this because this is, in, granted there's some infrastructural pieces that we have to do, but there's some things that we're being mandated to do. And if we don't offer relief to just hit the taxpayer over the head, right. or right. not the taxpayer, every business owner, anybody who uses water. Right. I, I would say, would it be fair to say about a third of this is our upgrades and two thirds is the meeting DNR compliance? Is that about where it's at? Yeah, I think that's pretty fair. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you just lighten up the fiscal conservative within me. I'm, <laughs> I'm going to turn this little button off. So 
So there's no more to put in the paper. <laughs> okay. Yeah, and I don't. I think just real quickly. I don't. As far as the other communities, it's what some of them. So, have done. so uh, um, just down the road at uh, uh, North Shore. At the water plant there that serves, you know, Whitefish Bay and and the Glendale and Fox Point, um, they had to take care of their clear wells too because they were constructed flat. Now they're not in the water table. Of course, we had to prove that, but they're not in the water table. But they were flat, and then there was dirt put on top of them. And uh, when the inspector uh, went, uh, from the, the state went in and peeked around a little bit, saw the ceiling was wet, well, it just so happened that <clears throat> it had rained for like 10 days in a row or something crazy like that. And so there's just standing water across this huge, you know, uh, uh, expanse of concrete under soil. And so they essentially uh, made them put uh, tapered roofs on top of them. So we just completed that project. And <clears throat> that was, you know, and again, that's kind of a tragic expense of money. But uh, the thing about it is, is when we went to meet with the DNR and talk about the, you know, IG whiz, it's been like that since the 60s. It was, we might as well have been talking to trees. Sure. It, uh, there was, what's your problem? You're, you're, Can't yeah. you read? You know, it was, it, there, there was, pretty uh, uh, unsympathetic. And, you know, that was only like a $1.4 million job or something like that. But that was one that I lived through recently. And so. Right. I could go with my own experience. I had Tom Nenning inspect our clear well and plant one two years ago. And the inspection report was crystal clear. It was great. There was no infiltrate. The structure was sound and everything. I called Kathy Wonderlick at the DNR. I said, Tom Nenning was just in there. Great inspection. She goes, I saw it. It looks great. She says, now prove to me that the clear well is still that way today, two days later. She didn't buy it still clear, that it's still good. Unless, you, unless you're seeing it right now, they're not going to buy it. You know, like I say, Tom, it's five years. I don't have to have that inspected for another five years. And that's fine. But I said, why do we need to raise our clear wells? Why do we need to pay all this money? She said, prove to me today. Well, that would mean draining the plant again and having somebody come in and inspect it. That's just not feasible. But that's the attitude that I get back from the DNR when I talk to them. Rob and I had tried to get a conversation with them, and it was the same thing. You're going to do this. This is the code. You will follow the code, no exceptions. Sure. And yeah, and I'm sure you know this. I mean, they're following the administrative code, and so we, of course, are following the direction of the DNR. And so your point, yeah. every, having conversations, everyone's with doing their job, but right. compliance doesn't always align with common sense. So, but thank you, thank you for your efforts. Thank you, Mayor. So, so back to where where we are, and the the deadlines we're up against, and. Um, and, and performing our, our duties in, in a timely fashion and making sure we don't, above all, lose uh, any grant money, uh, we would like to press forward. And so um, in, in front of you is a uh, <clears throat> proposal from SEH City Water uh, on moving forward with design of these improvements. It's a, a time and materials not to exceed of $914,000. And this is uh, this is a... Um, uh, a two-year design, uh, well, not quite a two-year design project. Of, what is the timeline? It's one, a little over one, a little over one year design uh, of these improvements. Um, this is uh, was recommended by staff for approval uh, and and recommended by the board of public works for approval as well. And it's I, it's a lot to chew on. So if, I don't know if there's any questions, Alderman Gasper. Oh, I'm sorry, Alderman Benning. Rob, so this will get us through Sorry. engineering bid specs that then we'd go out to bid per that timeline we saw before, correct? Correct. And there'd be a different engagement during construction? Yes, yes. This does not include construction inspection. This just gets you through award. Okay. Yeah. 
And this is for option one. Okay. Yes. Okay. So we would be using his $813,000 EA grant f to offset 900 of this design fee or that, and the, no. but that, but that's not yep. design. That's, Oh, right. it's just, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 I I would just interject that if you approve it, you do so subject to my approval. I can get uh, Miles my thoughts on a couple of minor points tomorrow. Um, I do recognize this from. Sort of a template from a prior agreement, but I see one or two things that I want to talk to Miles about. So, if you'll indulge me in that regard, see, you shouldn't have made that lawyer joke. <laughs> yeah. oh, oh, that's, that's true, Tom. Tom did that, didn't he? Wasn't yeah, that Tom? Yeah, yeah. Tom, yeah. Tom, yeah. Tom, our owner's rep back there. See, open on. See, we want to work cooperatively with our engineering professionals. So. <laughs> We're not so different, Tom, lawyers and engineers. Lawyers just have a lot more charisma. <laughs> and better dressed. Right. Yeah. Right. The floor is now yeah. open for debate. Right. All right, Alderman Gasper. Um, I move approval of the professional services agreement with Short, Ellie, and Hendrickson for engineering services on the proposed water treatment plant improvements for not to exceed $914,000 pending approval of the city attorney. Is there a second? Second by Alderman Tierney. Tierney. Okay, thank you. Any questions or concerns about the motion? All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Excellent. All right, consideration of possible action on resolution 2021-7, compliance maintenance resolution for 2020 compliance maintenance, annual report. Staff recommendation is review body of report, ask questions if necessary. Right, and so this is an annual report that uh, Dan Bueller uh, puts together. And uh, as he indicated in his report, we received uh, um, a perfect score. Uh, and... You have the report. Does anyone have any questions about it? Is there a published honor roll somewhere that they, <laughs> they do this on an actual grading <laughs> scale? That's hilarious. Yeah. Any questions for Rob? <laughs> I, I'll move approval. Second. Oh, it's a. Oh, yeah, I think. Oh, right. The, yes, there's a resolution attached. Yeah, that is required. Is that the second action here, or that's the action on this one? So it's mo it's it's acceptance of the resolution. Is that the motion? Yeah, I, I move to accept the resolution. I agree. No, oh, he made the motion, and you will accept that second. Okay, so it's a resolution. So we need a roll call vote. Or were there any questions or concerns about the resolution before we? No, I think it just highlights the great work that Dan does down there, right? I mean, like, we don't... We don't need a roll call vote, I was just told. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? I made the motion. Alderman Gasper. It's okay. All right, consideration of possible action on the purchase of a UV disinfection equipment for the wastewater treatment plant. Okay, so, uh, again, this is a, a report from Dan, but... Um, the replacement of our UV disinfection system down there was was included in the, the strand re, uh, needs report that was completed earlier this year. Um, as Dan notes, our, our current system is over 31 years old, and so it's difficult uh, to find replacement parts, and, uh, and it's uh, time to install a new one. So um, in order to save money on the... Uh, on the expense of the project, we're looking to purchase the equipment, um, direct purchase the equipment, and then um, Strand is, is working on a design, or I'm sorry, on specifications for installation. So that'll be, the, the actual installation will be bid out, but the purchase of the equipment, um, we're <coughs> looking to replace our, our current Trojan system with a new Trojan system, and um, the cost of um, 
The uh, cost of this is $299,720. And so, it's recommended by the Board of Public Works to approve this purchase. All right, so the staff recommendation is to approve the purchase of the new UV equipment. Any questions for Rob? Is there a motion to accept that recommendation? Yeah, just a question for Rob real quick. Um, I'm just looking at the memo here, and I didn't see the 299, so... Oh, yeah. The, the I, memos I, are just not helpful. I, I apologize. Yeah, Dan and I went through this after it was already published, essentially. So this fits into the overall project at the wastewater plant, kind of like the blower we've talked about before. This is just another piece. Yes. Does he have an overall arrangement so somebody that's managing all of these changes so they all fit together on a timely basis or how are we how are we doing this i'm a little concerned we're doing a little here a little there mm -hmm. um we're gonna we're gonna step on our toes or we're gonna miss something um maybe i'll let tony take over i mean i'm thinking more <laughs> from a project management you know overall making sure we get to the end game on a timely basis I mean, essentially, we uh, the recommended projects from the the needs analysis. We've essentially laid out U, UV this UV blower, and then the um, the pH analyzer. Um, but there was a lot more things, like yeah. even potentially another tank and cutting in the hill. You know that kind of yeah. Stuff. I mean, they're still looking at it, but I I don't see those as being those are not those are the things that they're still investigating. I guess I don't where, see where I'm going yeah. is kind of like we just had this big discussion with Leo. We had a discussion with Dan about, you know, what was the recommendations? What are we moving forwards with? What's What do we anticipate the total cost to meet the DNR requirements are going to be for wastewater? Right. And, and you know, again, picking piecemeal here and there, it's a little hard to, to see that. Yes, sure. And, I mean, we can bring you more. I, I can tell you that these are these were... As I recall, the only essential needs, in addition to the generator, which is being redesigned, we had been so, at last so year. these and the generator would meet the DNR requirements for wastewater at a minimum, right? From a DNR perspective, yes, yeah, and really, it's only the generators were under orders from the DNR for it's wastewater. Other, yeah, yes, but there's other aging equipment that we. I mean, I know the other stuff that we're talking about, like this UV and and the blower were. Right. Way past end of life, so. Right, right. These are the most urgent needs we have. Okay, thanks. Tony, you want to address that or? Yeah, if I could just jump in here for a second. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, so as, as you all know, the facility's assessment and condition needs report was uh, done a short time ago. So I think it sounds to me, or at least what I'm hearing, and you can tell me if this is incorrect, is what you'd like to see is based on the recommendations in that report, what's kind of the implementation plan? And that's something that staff is working through. And at some point here in the near future, I would anticipate that that'll all be fleshed out and come before uh, this body. Uh, with regard to the projects for this year, um, I, I won't argue with the fact that there are a number of different ones, uh, but what I will say is that I'm confident uh, in staff's ability to manage them effectively um, to the point where they will come in budget. Um, if they don't, we'll obviously be before this body as well. Um, the last thing I just point out is that for the capital expenses, um, I put on all of your desks uh, a breakdown of where we're at for all the projects. So just going over this briefly, understanding that there's this uh, project and also uh, the next item, Spinnaker West Pond. Um, so what you have before you is on the left side of kind of the gray uh, vertical bar going down is all the projects. Uh, then the original CIP budget along with the revised estimated budget. And then if you go to the right of that vertical line, there is uh, the funding sources that support all of those projects. Um, so there's three funding sources, 2022, it should say 2021. My bad, sorry. Uh, so it should be 2021 borrowing. 
as one funding source, then the Equipment Replacement Fund, along with the Sanitary Sewer Maintenance Fund. Um, so as you can see for this particular project, um, what we're looking to do is in fact borrow for it. And Dan noted in a discussion where we put this together that he would anticipate delivery in September. And then as you go down a little further, uh, three lines, three rows, uh, the plant upgrades engineering, that touches on the installation piece uh, for both the blower and the UV equipment. So Tony, just a quick one then on that UV disinfection, the revised but estimated budget is 475, but Rob just said 299. Right. 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 Uh, Sorry. Yeah. yeah. Yep. So, the, so yeah. Just to clear up any confusion. Yeah. Right. Three hundred thousand dollars is for the equipment. Then the balance of that four seventy five, one hundred seventy five is for the installation, and then part of that sixty six thousand is the engineering related to okay. both of those projects, those yep. two projects. Yeah. So I guess I mean that's just not clearly laid out in the memo. Yep. So. Okay, thanks. So there's a recommendation to approve the purchase of that UV equipment for the project before the project begins, basically putting it on layaway. So we're ready to go to ensure the price, right? This is fiscally steward. This is fiscal stewardship. So yes, it's good stuff. Or Alderman Gasper. Yeah, I just had one comment from discussion in at Board of Public Works on this item, um, and Rob can correct me if I'm remembering this incorrectly, but um, the they were pretty confident that if we um, went and allowed this to be included in the bid by the contractor that there would be a rather large markup on this piece of equipment and that it is cheaper for us to buy it, sit on it, and then hire the contractor to install it separately. Yes, that's correct. Thank you. Uh, I would just, again, ask that you give me the opportunity to review this. This is um, all in the 16-page single-space contract. I just got it on Friday afternoon. So if you could uh, make any approval subject to my review and approval, I would appreciate that. Okay. Looking for a motion? Sure. I'll move approval uh, for the purchase of the Trojan equipment, UV equipment. Uh, for uh, two hundred ninety-nine thousand seven hundred and twenty dollars, uh, pending review by the city attorney. Is there a second? Second by Alderman Tierney. Any questions or concerns about the motion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. My only question is: We're moving forward here onto the next agenda item. Here, Rob, is that as we approve some of these pieces, as we're going into strategic planning, and I know um, Tony and I have spoken about this, but I'm going to harp on this 25-year maintenance idea again. These are significant, you know, I don't, kind of non-strategic surprises for the city. So to have those laid out, much like we would do with vehicle replacement and other places, that would be fantastic. So thank you. Okay. The next uh, item is consideration of possible action on award for a contract for the construction of improvements to Spinnaker West Pond. Staff recommends the staff award the contract for improvements to the Spinnaker West Pond to Highway Landscapers Incorporated. Okay, so this is this has been an, another project that we've been working on for for several years. Um, this uh, and, I, and I think everyone is is pretty familiar with it. So I'll just um, make a few brief comments on on uh, how we've gotten to this point. Um, this is a this is an area of the city that has regularly been inundated with flooding since. Um, at least as far back as the, the 70s, if not before then, although I think the subdivision was just constructed in the 50s and 60s. So um, in any case, so so essentially since it's been constructed, they've experienced some, some fairly significant flooding. Um, the problem primarily is, is uh, with um, five or six homes, uh, most of them have exposed or partially exposed basements. Um, <clears throat> The, uh, the culvert underneath uh, Spring Street that it ultimately goes through is, uh, is undersized uh, in order to uh, convey the, 
surface water runoff. Um, but uh, prior to installing a, a larger culvert, we need to um, retain the, the water upstream. And so that's what this project accomplishes. Um, we have several reports from uh, Stantec on this that uh, we went through with the, the Board of Public Works. I didn't include it in your already lengthy packet. Um, <coughs> excuse me. And so, um, but one thing I, I did highlight in the, the memo on this that I want to highlight again tonight that this project alone will not alleviate flooding for the people who are experiencing the 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 largest impact, those people being along um, South Spring, I'm sorry, North Spring Street. Um, in, in fact, there'll be hardly any relief at all in in the 100 year event. Um, it will, what it what it does is two things. It, it, um, it will essentially um, affect the, the time of, the timing, it'll, it'll affect, it'll delay the effective runoff that's running through the culvert so that the amount of water that is being conveyed downstream of Spring Street will be no greater after the enlarged culvert is put in than, than what it is before. And so that's what it does is it, it essentially regulates the discharge of the water through the culvert that we anticipate installing in, in a future project. And, and we've gone over that both at Board of Public Works and I think before this council. Um, the only, probably the biggest benefit that you'd see right away just from the, the pond itself um, in terms of flooding is that in, in lesser storms, you're not gonna see the, the, the runoff down the, the street um, as you do now. So in lesser events, I think more of the nu nuisance flooding will be controlled by this pond, but not, not the, uh, the type of events that wind up with water in people's basements. Um, so I did want to I did want to make that clear again. This is this is step one on on a, a, a two or three phase project. The next the other two phases would be the culverts underneath uh, Spring Street and under culvert or under Garfield. But this this is the first step. You can't put in the larger culvert first because again, the concern about flooding downstream, which is um, simplicity, the railroad tracks, and then our own street department. Um, having said that, uh, the the little bidder for this contract is uh, Highway Landscapers, which we worked with most recently in December. They did an, an excellent job. They're approximately uh, two hundred thousand uh, dollars lower than the than the uh, next highest bidder. Um, this is above our was higher than the estimate that um, that that we had received from Stantec. So we uh, actually have a meeting tomorrow with them to try and value engineer a few of the items so that we can possibly reduce the cost. Um, pri primarily looking at the, the retaining wall design and the uh, landscape restoration. So we'll be looking at those things and, and seeing if we can work with the contractor to reduce those costs. Um, so that was the recommendation of the Board of Public Works that we approve this contract, but again, work with the contractor to reduce the, the costs where we can. Budget-wise, um, the $632,000 bid, we have to um, uh, combine with the $189,000 uh, professional services fees that we're paying to Stantec, not only for the design of the, the project, but the um, Landscape, they're performing the landscape restoration and they are also uh, performing the contract management and grant management with, um, with uh, Sogol, the Sustain Our Great Lakes Fund, which from which whom we are receiving a $400,000 grant. Um, we've budgeted $400,000 in, in the, the general borrowing 200 um, from sewer. So Tony can talk a little bit more about that, but um, with with what we've budgeted and the grant, we we, we can uh, we we will essentially have more money than we need. But again, we're trying to reduce our costs as much as we can. Thank you, Rob. Any questions for Rob? No, I I think I most appreciate the step that this is this is step one right in this process. That you know this by itself 
Um, it's going to help. So I'm glad we can provide, start to provide some relief to the homeowners in that neighborhood, but more work will be done, need to be done in the future to fully mitigate these 100-year and 500-year events that we see every couple of years now. So um, I'm appreciative that we can get this done and, and finalized. So um, for that, um, I, I would move approval unless there's further discussion. There's a motion for approval. Is there a second? I'll second. Alderman Apostle? Questions or concerns about the motions? Um, just to follow up, Rob, the, the value engineering, um, I'll, I'll say personally, I didn't think it was necessary to do the stamping and the staining of the concrete. We didn't do it on Valley Creek, so I don't know why we would do it out there. And if I recall, there was a $20,000 plus dollar uptick for that. So I would encourage us to look at that and take it out. Okay. Um, well, that, yeah, that's one of the items we're going to talk about is if there's a way... I mean, we'd still like to make it a, an attractive wall so that it doesn't look like a sure. no. And, and, something and that I, engineers I get that built. part, but <laughs> at that price, it was beyond what I would sure. Think well, was. sure. And so, I, yeah, for the twenty thousand dollars for the forms, I I wondered if we couldn't just put it in stone. But um, that's where we're going to start. Some bigger bushes to hide it. With it, well, yeah. we're All right. Well, we have a motion and a second. Yeah. And that, yeah. So and one, thank you for that. And one, one, one final comment that we never talk about, but the the four hundred thousand dollar grant is for pollution control. So this this is going to have an environmental service environmentally as well. And so Sock Creek and Lake Michigan, yeah. as a result, will have less pollutants being carried is, to is it. Is there a timeline on that grant? Um, there is, but we're well with where we were just awarded the grant in January, so we're. We're okay Great. on that. Oh yeah, yeah. It's a. Th I believe it's a three-year grant, so we'll have no troubles. Any other questions or clarifications on the, on the motion? Okay. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. Okay. Moving on to new business, we have a first reading of uh, Ordinance Twenty Twenty One Dash Nine, amending Municipal Code for approval of temporary Class B retailers' licenses. Reading number one, City Clerk Westerbeek. Thank you, Mayor. Um, this is being brought before you. Um, I, as I explained in my report that I gave to you, um, this type of license is always embedded within uh, the event permit application process that I'm handling uh, at our level in our office, uh, which is previously uh, a change to how we've been handling it um, a, a year ago and in the beginning of this year. This uh, was not included with that change, and so this is this one document is an outlier that's, that's kind of detached from the whole process. So uh, it would make um, this process easier for us to finish it in complete fashion. It is a little confusing for the applicants to have uh, this as a separate piece, although it is part of the event permit application. Uh, I think that would clear that up. And um, so I'm asking that we can uh, include this also with that uh, event permit application process and be able to approve that all at the same time um, within our office after they've met all the requirements and the city attorney has approved the condition or the um, certificate of insurance as required. This is a first reading, by the way, so it will come back on July 6th. Any questions for clarification for the clerk? Okay, hey, appreciate appreciate the uh, iteration, Thank you. making the process smoother. All right, All right. 10B, review and discussion on the draft future land use plan. Okay. Bob. Sure. Thank you. All right, this is, um, this is a discussion item only, and really it's just an update to the council uh, on the status of the future land use plan. Uh, project that was kicked off in 2020. Um, uh, so what I'll do is just provide a, uh, in the interest of time, a brief update on, on where things stand. Uh, but more importantly, um, I did want to use this public forum as an opportunity just to promote uh, the project uh, and kind of promote uh, what is available uh, to the uh, public or any stakeholders that are interested uh, in participating and just kind of uh, showcase that. Um, so I'll just get started here. Um, and so 
as you as you've heard before, um, the city is updating its future land use map, and there's an a, accompanying document to go with that. It was created in uh, 2008, and that was uh, you know 13 years ago. And and generally, the state recommends and and suggests we update such documents, our comprehensive plans, or pieces of it every 10 years. Um, and so that's what we've been doing. And so what I want to do is just uh, show you where we are, what's available on, on our website. And, it's, and this is really the, the best and primary form of contact to review, comment, uh, and just kind of uh, be involved. Um, this is on the front page of the city website. Uh, there's just a, a summary of the project. Uh, you will see next steps and an anticipated schedule. And so we're coming up on third base. Uh, we're about to round third and, and come into home, hopefully by the, uh, by the August uh, approval cycle. Uh, but uh, late May, we were able to get the, uh, the map up on site uh, along with the document. And I'm looking at just, you know, a look, about a good month of, of putting that up there. It's a rough draft uh, version. And then going into later this summer, you know, f finishing up June and into July, uh, revising and then putting it into a more of a, a, f a finished of, uh, final draft format. And that will put us into a second round of the public review and the approval uh, cycle. So looking at the, at the website, here it is, front page of the city website, and then it provides a link uh, to uh, kind of the, the, the site proper. And there you have a little more detailed summary of the, what the project is. And then you have uh, links here. This is under public review and input, inviting anyone and everyone to look at kind of the digital version of the uh, land use, uh, future land use map. So this is accessible. This is uh, the version here that we have now. Um, and then we also have an opportunity uh, to look at the accompanying text document uh, here. And then lastly, we also have not lastly, but we also have just a comparison, say, just kind of the existing uh, land use element from the uh, that 2008 uh, comprehensive plan uh, process. And then uh, we, la we also have a, this is what I'm really kind of promoting, is just kind of a survey monkey link. It's free. It's anonymous. It's just about a, maybe a baker's dozens worth of, of, of questions um, that anyone can take online. It takes about uh, 10 minutes, unless anyone wants to write more. These are mostly fill in the blank, not so much a, sur a traditional survey, but really just kind of a, almost like a one-on-one -on -one, uh, interview for anyone that wants to get their uh, comments based on, you know, future development and in some cases urban design. And then uh, what we will have, uh, I hope by the end of this week, is a digital version or kind of a GIS version uh, of the of the land use map for the uh, for for the public at large to review. Um, here is the uh, GIS version. We can uh, scroll in. It'll probably be a little more transparent, I hope, uh, to see kind of the underlying um, structures and uh, aerial imagery, just so you're not looking at colored squares. And then the legend. Uh, is there. And then, you know, lastly, we, it is also on the Facebook, the City of Port Washington Facebook, the same link and uh, the same information. Um, as I mentioned, you know, we're looking at uh, this month, uh, just kind of putting it out there for everyone, and July, the polishing, and then the August is the uh, approval. I am starting to get some comments, some feedback from the council already or just very recently, so thank you all for that. Um, one thing I did want to just, just a little FYI is just based on just the survey that's been out there and just the responses, um, I thought it was just kind of interesting, just kind of, and it's a small sample. It's, you know, it's only got a dozen uh, comments on there uh, at this point. But one thing I did want to uh, point out was I found it interesting was, you know, why I chose, why did you move to port? Either you were always from here, you moved back, uh, you know, other reasons. And just looking at some of the, the comments that were, that were given, um, I just thought it interesting that, you know, you know, the proximity to Milwaukee, 
and it shows up on probably a little more than half of these responses, actually more than half of the responses. So, um, you know, having that, that small town, you know, uh, you know, that, well, one of them, just kind of that small attractive town, but we're still close to Milwaukee, either for work or just being in the metropolitan orbit now. Um, I just think that's, to, to, for, as a planner, I always just... Were the, were the other half to escape Cedarburg or something like that? <laughs> I didn't have that option and no one uh, contributed on their own. Well, we'll see uh, if that shows up now. <laughs> one yeah. answer was affordability, so we could that could apply to you know a fairly number of, of comments. But I, I I enjoyed the the answer the answers to that. Um, but what is your? Can I ask you a question at this mm -hmm. point? What is your um, like? What is your ideal participation rate on that on that? Like you said, you have it's a always, few now. It's always it's my experience is it's always a little lower than what you think, and it's really hard to predict. Um, you know, I've done you know I've, I've done you know downtown Milwaukee has about eighty thousand residents, um, and you know I I've walked into workshops for that and maybe a dozen people. Sure. Um, and so um, it doesn't surprise me. Um, if I, I've gotten some emails and I've get, just gotten some uh, con contributions here, um, it's a small sample. Um, will it go up? I think it will. Uh, but this was not out of the ordinary for, for me. Yeah, I just, I ask because I, I think that as we head into strategic planning and having a clear communication mm -hmm. strategy and even dedicated personnel towards things like this, to be able to regularly push this out to citizens. Um, will be important, and I, I think to use some of our existing platforms would be is That's what I wanted to use tonight for, because it, it's, it, it, it's all through f social media. It's all through the yeah. city website, which you can throw links to everyone. Uh, with Facebook, it can get go around the horn a little bit. And so that's always the a um, little more wide-ranging uh, ability to do so. Um, it's not a full-blown comprehensive plan. It's a sliver yeah. of it. But but like I, when we're strategic about asking yeah. Main Street to mm -hmm. push it out to their stakeholders and asking yep, been, service clubs to push exactly. it out to their that's, stakeholders. That's that's how it works. And really, this is kind of a little bit of a, a little bit of a base work for uh, the downtown plan, which we'll be you know picking up uh, later this summer into the fall in in earnest. Yeah, mm -hmm. I would say even well, extent an extent of. Oh, sorry. I'm just gonna say go ahead. Thank you. Um, an extent of that too, if there's if there's certain regions or areas of the town that you're passionate about, I think Bob's memo does a good job of laying all of those regions of the city out, right? For those of us that are on the west side that are passionate about what we would do with that land there, the Shannon Farm, like I'm very passionate about that, right? Yeah. So um, for those of you that are listening or reading or, or, or participating on Facebook, to see that there are specific recommendations for each of these regions across the city that, you know, I would definitely encourage discussion with city staff and, and, and your neighbors and other residents to say, what would you would like to see at the Shannon Farms? What would you like to see downtown, the EVS, you know, the Bluff land? All the, the, there are specific regions to see that are recommendations here. So I think you've done a very good job. Yeah, and just to pile on your point, Alderman Pleitner, this is the, there is a focus on, you know, a handful of what I call susceptible to change uh, sites that are probably obvious to most. Um, you know, and, and you know, I'll just use again. I'm going to use this forum just to kind of point that out for others living in certain parts of the town or what they have interest in. You know, just looking at uh, the north side, both the Piggly Wiggly uh, land, and also, you know, we do have a subdivision proposal now for, you know, this the, these areas here. Um, but just moving along, you know, Wisconsin and Whitefish, we have that collection of of, of commercial properties at that intersection, and. You know, we also have some kind of, uh, you know, a lot of unbuilt areas, large parking lots, and just kind of undeveloped portions next to that that maybe could be uh, infilled with or could be something else. Again, and then we also have a pretty significant site just, do just downtown, and it's a pretty big site at a key location with some nice amenities or could have nice amenities. Again, as Alderman Pleitner mentioned, you know, looking at Highway 33, uh, and we have a, you know, that's almost almost a 40 acre uh, a site city owned just at the entrance of the west side of the city and again looking at spring street another you know the commercial uh, gateway or arterial coming into the city um, you know we have a fairly large visible vacant site uh, the deal you know the for, former evs site and then just moving along to the south we have you know 22 acres that has a brokered sign that's looking at the bluff 
And then, you know, just, and then on the far south side, Lakeshore Road area, we have, you know, that's just a big swath of undeveloped land uh, that, uh, you know, is pretty significant. So, um, you know, there's some key parcels to, uh, to consider here. You know, I think the mayor likes to use the word renaissance, right? So we'll steal that. This is a good time for that, right? Like, yeah, what, what do we want the future of our city to look like? And this is a key way to start to think about that. So, yeah. So uh, if anyone just promoting that and either through yourself or your own, uh, you know, websites or uh, social media, you know, throw these links around. They're found on this front page of the city website. They're found on the uh, city Facebook site. And, and, and take a look. Um, and it's a very easy uh, gentle uh, uh, survey, and just look at the documents and email or use the, uh, use the uh, survey. Sorry, Bob. Did you say how long? Did you say how long the survey would be up, Bob? Um, at least another two weeks. Alderman Benning. Yeah, and Bob, are you doing any? I know you've got it on Facebook and the city website. Are we doing anything else where we're holding any kind of in-person sessions or? How are we getting we're, the word? Yeah, out? we're. I, it was all. It's all on this format because we're coming out of the out of the, yeah. the the COVID, and so that went out the window in the in the winter. Um, so it's between this and then just the 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 public meetings that okay. that are planned. I, I'd strongly suggest we get with uh, Tom and Catherine at least. You know, with with senior and and the library and get them to promote it through their. You know. I'll take people 10 times, 10 different ways. So. Be doing that tomorrow. Okay. I figured. One other suggestion I would have, just having uh, just gone to the library feedback piece too and seeing a small amount of people there, a couple of aldermen, is uh, would it be possible at the department leader meetings to include any feedback loops on all boards and commissions under new business or future business to just add in there that ability for, to advocate for each other? We're looking for feedback on the library. Tony's got a great piece out for strategic planning, you for land use. We have a natural group of, you know, 70 some volunteers who are on all those boards and commissions. They're highly engaged people who would, you know, be able to promote for us. So just a thought or consideration. Any other questions for Bob on the land use? other than what was submitted. Okay, so we're at third base, looking for a single to bring it home. Thank you. Using your baseball analogy. Thank Brewers you. are zero, zero. Bucks are now losing by three, apparently. Okay, uh, review and discussion on future land use plan. Thank you for that. And final item for tonight is review and discussion on strategic plan request for RFP. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, realizing the time, uh, the Bucks score, the time that's left in the game, and uh, reflecting on what Bob said, uh, this is one to uh, promote the fact that we're doing strategic planning, but two also to receive feedback from this body about what's contained within the RFP. Um, so I will keep my comments uh, brief, and then uh, if there's any additional comments or questions, I can certainly answer those, or I would encourage uh, additional feedback uh, up through the end of this week, um, as I will likely get this out on Monday of next week. Um, so what you have before you tonight is an RFP that is titled Strategic Planning Professional Services Vision 2026. Um, so the idea here that we've uh, budgeted for in the 2021 uh, CIP is that working with elected officials, staff, and uh, stakeholders in the community, um, we would put together a five-year strategic plan. And the idea here, and one of the things that I heard loud and clear coming into the organization is that right now, um, a vision for people to embrace for the future is lacking. And I think what that ends up creating is an organization that um, isn't aligned at, at all phases and different levels. Um, so the concept that we've talked about is that once we get this vision laid out, then we start to cascade this down to the organization departmentally uh, by employee, and then really start to communicate that within the community as well. Um, so the goal here is, uh, as far as the services that is, 
is a collaborative and comprehensive process that results in an actionable plan with near and long-term goals. Um, one of the uh, pieces or reflections that the mayor uh, gave to me was adding on a piece that says, as well as predefined measures of success. So in other words, what are the um, items, our tasks, strategies, goals that we will identify to really determine uh, the outcomes that will define that success. Um, there are really three sections to this, the instructions to respondents, uh, background and scope of services, and then the uh, evaluation criteria, minimum requirements. Um, the three goals that I outlined is to provide a shared organizational v uh, vision and mission, uh, identifying core competencies for the organization, and the third was fostering a strong and cohesive organizational culture. Um, and a fourth one that would be added is uh, consistent with uh, the previous edition, uh, so predefined measures of success. Um, as far as the schedule, uh, so as I mentioned, we'd get this out on Monday. It, it'd be out for um, a month roughly with proposals due on July 16th. Um, prior to that, uh, any questions or cl clarifications would be by July 2nd. Um, then the week of August 2nd, uh, I would come back to the council with uh, either one of two things, either a recommendation by a selection committee or a recommendation of maybe two to three um, different consultants and then have them come in and interview with the council. Um, so that's one piece that I'm looking for feedback about. If there's uh, a preference to just have a recommended consultant or if there's a preference for a couple of consultants to come in and provide an interview to the council so that you guys can then select ultimately um, the individual or company that's chosen. And then we try to get the contract executed by August 16th. And then from there, uh, I would hope to start uh, in September. Uh, this, I'm envisioning this as a three to six month project, um, but t dependent on what is the final scope of work, it may end up being shorter, may end up being longer, um, but I think that's probably a good benchmark to set for the duration for an effort like this. Um, so with that, I will uh, open it up for any questions or comments. I'll start. Um, my my recommendation is that, or request would be that you, and the team review that RFP and you bring to us who you are going to work with. I mean, this is a part time job for you through this whole process, and for us to go through and interview three people to choose somebody that you know is not your desired candidate. I my preference is to take your recommendation, trust that, move forward, and go. But I'd I'd rather I'd like to hear from the full council on that. I would agree with you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, thank you. Okay. Any other questions for clarification on this? Thought you did a nice job on that RFP. Okay. Hearing none, we'll move on to forthcoming events. We are we are loving rec department soccer. I, I can say that. <laughs> Director Schulte is doing a great job. Um, we might. I mean, do the Nightski kids coach soccer? Do they? Do they? Uh, not at this point. They, they just uh, they just uh, individually tutor children at this point. <laughs> yeah, good question. Um, I have one to add is uh, in the, the next coming few weeks, I'll be working with the department heads to do some training on high performing boards and, and what to expect. And then working uh, eventually with other boards and commissions, especially as we appoint new people to kind of have an annual in-service for new appointees to kind of go through like what are the responsibilities, expectations of them uh, as board members, reviewing packets, how to behave at board meetings, being careful, staying to agendas, uh, and then getting ourselves to more of a universal process in all of the boards and commissions. So Tony and I will be working on that. You're more than welcome to attend that. That's when did you say? Uh, was it two weeks, two Fridays from now? I believe it might be next Friday. Yeah, that it is. Send it out to the, it's uh, um. Oh, do you have yeah, it's time? June 25th at 8:30. 8:30 okay. to 10. 
also repeat uh, Susan's comment that the farmers market starts this weekend, right? Or the farmers night? farmers market this week. We've got Fourth uh, of July and the Third of July events and activities <laughs> through Park and Rec and the fireworks on the third. So yeah, camping on the bluffs coming up. There's all kinds of cool things going on. Yeah. Greatest city in North America. Any other public comments before we close out? Um, just one thing I wanted to uh, mention. Uh, I can't think of the name of it now. The, uh, the new senior housing that uh, down on South Spring, they had their open house. Spring Harbor. Spring Harbor on Tuesday. Yeah. Very, very nice facility and something that I think nice that will be a real boon to the uh, community. But, uh, very, very nicely done. Certainly added to the... Uh, Aesthetics of that entrance to Port Washington. <laughs> Best looking thing down there, right? Yeah, now. yeah. They just have to look at the town there in that little <laughs> island. Yeah. Anything else? Okay, I'll be looking for a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 This meeting is adjourned. Go Pirates.